Hey everyone, welcome back to Bucky's Customs. Hey, in this video, we're going to complete our video series on inlays with volume five. Right. I'm really excited about this one because honestly, it's my favorite. I, uh, I'm an outdoor person. I hunt, I fish, and I enjoy all that stuff. And this particular inlay is special to me in that way. So let's get started with that. I glued up a piece of cherry end grain, and I also glued up a walnut end grain. These inlays, this inlay material has to be the same as the cutting board, which is a maple end grain. The walnut's three eighths, this cherry's a half inch. I'm going to carve both my male inlays, and then we're gonna carve the female in the cutting board, get that first glue up done, and then we'll work on from there. So stay with us. We are ready to go with our VCAR Pro inlay tutorial. So that's what we're going to do right now. I'm going to show you. I have VCAR Pro open, as you can see, and we have what we want on the screen. That is our bitmap. And we created our inlays from that bitmap. But first, we needed to select the bitmap like we are right now and come over here to this trace bitmap tool and trace this bitmap. You notice it's a black and white. I always use black and white. It's the best, best to you know, do it that way so that you don't have as many colors that you have to mess with. I had to edit a little bit. I won't go into any of that. I'll do another video some other time on that. But you can also bring in vectors or create vectors in VCAR Pro just as easily without a bitmap. So um, text, that kind of stuff. And, you know, for the basics of it, um, this is probably as basic as a, a black and white cartoon image you can get. These, this is basically how I found this, this particular image. So now that we've got it, what we want to do is we want to decide how we want to carve it. And a lot of times, if you have enough uh, different colored woods... You can you can do some fancy stuff in there. I don't have a whole bunch of fancy woods. Um, I've got walnut. I've got cherry. I've got maple. Uh, beach, beach and maple are about the same. But um, you know that's that's really all I have. If I'm gonna use color, I'm gonna need to use either an epoxy or use food coloring to try to color some wood. You know, there's plenty of different ways you can do this. Now, I've realized that after making these cutting boards, people don't want to carve on them. I'm like, are you crazy? You don't want to carve on it. Well, no, they really don't want to carve on it because obviously, you know, it's too nice to them. They don't want to carve on it. So I figured use the back and you can display the front, cut the crap out of the back, which made me think that I don't like plastic cutting boards and only because you can cut that stuff off and it gets in your food and it's just not good. If I were to use epoxy on a cutting board you could display it, flip it over and use the actual wood for what you want to cut on. Anyway this is how we started. Hey before we go any further I want to say a big thank you to our sponsor CNC Labs, the makers of the Long Mill Benchtop CNC, just like the one we have here in our shop. Go to their website, cnc.com, and order your mill today. You'll be so happy you did. Now let's get back to this week's project. We started right here with this image, and we created vectors from this image. But first thing I did was, is I'm going to go up here to my layer drop down and I'm going to show you the different layers that I created and these are based on the the different tool paths that I'm going to need 
basically the bitmap layer shows what it shows. We can shut that off and turn the base layer on, which is the actual layer that is going to get carved. These are the vectors that I've created. I love this scene. Anybody who is an outdoor person, a fisherman, a hunter, anybody like that would love this and I got a lot of comments on what to carve you know what I mean it was like you know everybody loves the outdoor stuff well I'm doing it so what I did was if we go up here into the layer folder you can see I've created one called family one called deer and the family is this word family and then the deer is this image the deer inlay is this image cut female cut into the board i don't know any other way of describing that i guess it, it's you know it's like it is what it is the pocket and the plug i guess i would call it maybe that'll work so what we're going to do is is on family what i'm going to do is i'm going to click on the word family and then i'm going to right click and I'm going to copy it to my family layer. Now what this does, what we're going to do is we're going to go in and we're going to make the family labor layer active. We're going to shut the base layer off and turn the family layer on. Now you notice that it brought in the word family in the exact same spot it was in on the base layer. That is important. Very, very important that you do not move it because that's where it's going to carve it on your board. It is in, also important that you size, like over here, you size your project the size of your piece. I do that all the time. This is basically all we're going to carve for um, a female. This is going to be a female. We're not going to do it at the same time that we do the deer one. So let's go back to the base layer. We'll turn the base layer on, shut the family layer off. We'll click on the deer. We'll right click. We'll copy that to the deer layer. So now shut the base layer off. We'll turn the deer layer on and there you go. It's in exactly the same spot it was in the base layer. So you create everything. That is typically called layer one, by the way. I change it to base layer. That is where everything goes and then you pick from that and copy to other layers for your toolpath layers and that's what I do. Now we would take from the deer layer, which we're on, right click, copy to deer inlay now we're going to shut the deer layer off because we really don't need to do anything with family or deer anymore where we need to edit and mess around is with the deer layer and we're going to turn that on now what we need to do is we need to create a boundary around this because we want to we want to create an inlay pl a plug so to speak so we want it to be proud of the wood that we're carving it into. And in order to do that, we need to create a boundary. So typically what I would do is I would just come up here and put a box around this. And you want to make sure that you use a large enough box so that your tool can get through to finish this off. And we'll apply that. Now this is all wasted carving out here, really. So if you wanted to take the time and draw a line tight around the whole piece and try to save some time there, yeah, it doesn't really make a difference. Um, whatever it adds, maybe five minutes. But um, I'm going to close that. Now we have our boundary. That is what we need to create this plug. So we're going to highlight the whole thing and group it. Group the objects. Now, the most important thing about making a plug is, is that it has to be able to fit in the pocket that you create. 
And in order to do that, you got to create an opposite image. You put a border around it, and then all this in here is a pocket, creates a pocket, and leaves your inlay uh, portion so that it makes it proud, so that it'll stick down in. You'll see. You've seen the other four. You you definitely know what I'm talking about. So, but the most important thing is, is we got to flip this. Go over here to Mirror Selected Objects, and then we're going to flip it horizontal, and we are done. That's it. We don't need to do any more with this. Don't move it. Don't change it. Uh, don't resize it. Leave it the way it is. Now, we can move it around the paper. This doesn't matter because we're going to position it to get the best yield out of our piece when we when we cut this plug but the female or the pocket that we're creating has to be where it has to be okay so we're gonna go over to family now we're gonna shut this one off go to family so now what we want to do is want to go to family we want to right click do the same thing we're going to you gotta select it right click copy to family inlay so then now we can shut family off go to family inlay and we're going to do the same thing with this we're going to create a boundary now in this case it's on the diagonal so i'm going to um, have to create the box and then twist it so we'll do apply then we'll close that box select it and then we will rotate it and then move it into position now you can see that it's just a tad bit too small so Create that a little bit. We can change the size of it. What I said was is that you can change this and you can put it anywhere. You just can't change the size. So we're going to move it so that it's on the piece. And then we can make sure that we have enough room around the outside. And I believe we do. Now we're going to come over here to File. We're going to save everything. Now we can create Tool Pass. And first thing I like to do is I like to start with the female or the, the pocket portion and oh no what did I do oh boy oh boy yep I did it you just seen this I went up to family now this is supposed to be up here I I screwed that up I was supposed to move the inlay one Let's see what I did here I, I moved the inlay one down, but I didn't, I put the box on the other one. So, yeah, that's a mess. So what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to undo. And let's see if that will let me do it. Keep doing it. There it is right there. So there's my family on that so we're going to we're going to copy this move to family inlay okay now this family is done we can shut this off and go to family inlay and open that and you can see that it's back there now the reason why this didn't work is because i was you i wasn't selecting the layer I have to select a layer in order to make it active. 
And because I didn't do that, it was still on the family layer and made all the changes to it. So now we can now we can select everything and move it down. Make sure I've got enough room, which we do. Don't resize any of that at all because it won't fit. I just want to make sure I got enough room to go around with my bit. And then we are done. So now I can save this. And let's just review. We're going to shut this off. We're going to make our bitmap layer live. And this is where we started. Then we shut the bitmap layer off and we go to base layer and that's the entire carve everything is on there except for the plugs now we're going to go to the family layer you can see that's in place we're going to shut that off and do the deer layer you can see that's in place now we'll do the same thing for the deer inlay you notice it's backwards that's intentional as i said and family Nope, it's not backwards, is it? So now what we need to do is we need to make the family inlay layer active. Then we need to select everything, right click and group. Then come over here and do a flip horizontal. And there we go. Now we are ready for tool pass. Right now, I want to work on the deer, which is the largest uh, pocket that we're going to do. And I want that in the background. So that's going to be the first carve. We're going to go up here and switch to the toolpath commands. You notice that everything is still here. It just brings up this window on the side. Now, we're going to start with a start depth of zero and then... Um, we're going to do a flat depth of 0.2. I'm going to uh, use the 60 degree V bits, what I've been using throughout this whole series. I'm not going to change. We're going to use a 60 degree. I'm going to use an eighth inch end mill for my clearance tool. I think I'm going to keep it on offset. We're going to change this to I'm going to call this deer pocket we're going to hit calculate okay but don't forget to select your vectors okay calculate so now it's calculated everything is there that we need to to do you can preview the tool path and you can see that it's created a pocket and we're going to fill that and it'll all look halfway decent once it gets filled now what we're going to do is i'm going to reset the preview we're going to come back do the z okay and we're going to come back over to the 2d view i'm going to come up here to the family make that active shut the deer off turn the family one on i'm going to select family i'm going to close the preview window i'm going to go back to v carve we're going to do the same exact thing for this i'm going to call this family pocket we're going to calculate and there we go we can do a preview uh, visible tool path and you can see that it is indeed a pocket Reset preview, close the preview. We're going to come back over here to 2D, go up to Deer Inlay. We're going to make that one active. We're going to shut family off. We're going to turn the Deer Inlay on. Now we want to select it. We want to use a V bit, V carve inlay. We're going to change this though, it's going to be 0.18 and then 0.02 for a flat depth. 
60 degree V bit, use the same V bit that uh, same V bit that you would use for your inlay or for your pocket as you do for the plug. We'll use the eighth inch end mill and we're going to call this deer plug and we'll calculate that and bam there's our plug now we can preview that visible tool path and you can see that all this here is gone and it's created that plug so it'll sit in there nicely you just you gotta love technology right so we'll reset the preview we'll close that we'll go back over here to the 2d view I want to go up to the folder menu. I want to select Family Inlay, make that active. And then I want to turn off the Deer Inlay. Let's select Family. We'll go up here to VBit. Same identical settings. Everything stays the same. We're going to call this Family Plug. We're going to calculate it. And there you go. Preview visible tool pass. And there it is. You can see how it's proud. Might have a little issue here, but I think it'll be fine. As far as being too thin, but I think it'll be fine. That is it. That's it. Now we just save the tool pass and go over to the mill and get this thing carved. Okay, so uh, <laughs> I broke that bit. I broke that eighth inch bit. Now, I used this collet. I bought an eighth inch collet. I really thought it would work really well. And I think it did, in all honesty. But I think maybe I didn't tighten it enough and it slid down a little bit. Or I didn't put it up in there enough. I went back to my quarter inch collet with my eighth inch spacer the one that came with the with the long mill and i've always had good luck with that you just got to make sure it's tight but uh we're going to re-zero the z the um the x and y didn't change and we're just going to restart this i think it might have been going a little bit too fast I didn't have any issues with this before. We'll see what happens. We'll try it again. Okay, <laughs> well, I just broke bit number two. This goes back to the last inlay that I did uh, where a viewer asked me if, my goodness, isn't point two a lot to take down in one pass? And I, I've done so many um, carves with eighth inch bits and Really, the only issue I've ever had is them loosening in this little collar that fits inside the larger collar. And that's because I didn't tighten it enough and it slid down. In this case, I broke them right off and they broke off inside this. So there's probably a situation where this is wore out and, you know, broken a few bits with this. So it, it probably has worn it out a little bit, but not sure if that's really the case. I think 
um, I'm just trying to go too fast. Now, in G Sender, you can speed up and slow down your pace, uh, your feet per minute, whatever you use. But um, I slowed it way down to like 40%, and it still broke the bit. So I'm, I'm going to go back to, you know, just too deep, too much of a cut. What I'm going to do now is I really don't know if I can salvage this piece, but I'm going to throw the V bit in it and I'm going to change the the tool path to just use the V bit. And I know it's going to take forever, but I've got to be able to salvage this piece of wood. I don't I don't really have any more cherry that I can glue up, so I've got to try to salvage this board. <laughs> kind of sucks. Maybe what I'll do is I'll change it to a quarter inch end mill to rough, and then, you know, that'll take up 90% of the big areas, and then we'll just use the V-bit for everything else. So I'm going to go back to my computer and redo that G-code, and we'll throw uh, whatever I need in here, quarter inch, and get started. I redid the tool pass for the deer and uh, put a quarter inch roughing bit in there instead of the eighth inch. We'll give this a go. Now, I did not have to re -Z or re zero my X and Y. That was already done. So we're going to leave that alone. And then all we did was do our Z for the up and down. And let's give this a shot. Let's see what happens. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to put the V-bit in and run the V-car. Well, I will say that that one was a challenge. And it's the last one, you know. Last one in the series. And it fought me from start to finish. I saved the piece of wood, I believe. I believe we're safe. I think it carved, it finished. So we'll see. Now I'm going to put the cutting board in and we're going to carve the pocket for the deer and get this glued up. I'm not really sure how good this came out. I've got some cleanup to do. And then I'm going to get it uh, glued into the pocket portion. We'll get it glued into that, clamped up, let it sit overnight, and then we'll put it back in the mill, uh, clean this inlay off, and then we'll carve the last inlay and put that plug in it. In the meantime, while I have it off in the clamps, to glue up, I'm going to carve the plug for the word family. This came out really well. I, I really believe that this is going to be okay. The initial carve had some issues, but I think we can sand it out and using some of the dust, some of the cherry dust that I have, I can uh, make a paste and fill in any of the voids because some of them did pull out. I'll put a juice groove on the back of this and make it usable. 
we'll get this cut out and glued up and we'll see you tomorrow. While this was clamped up last night, I mixed up some cherry uh, dust and some type bond three and I made a paste and I put it in here and now there's some here that I couldn't get to but you can definitely see the lighter parts is definitely what happened I thought I had caught any major damage due to my backlash not being loose i mean it had some play in it i was really surprised i was i was kind of thinking man that sounds different well <laughs> if that ever happens to you take heed because that is what happened it made my roughing bit off enough to cause issue with the inlay i'm not gonna go ahead and start over i'm not about that i'm about this is the my favorite one. This is the one I'm keeping. And I don't really care. I want that to remind me of just what I screwed up here. Uh, if I had done the maintenance and checked the mill, just a quick check, make sure everything was tight, then I could have prevented this. Let me get this thing, uh, some more paste in it. Let me Let me do that. And we'll show you what, uh, what it looks like when it's all sanded and ready for the counter. Wow, that was so much fun to do. This last board is absolutely my favorite, whether I screwed it up or not. We managed to get through it. My router was crapping out. I think the brushes are going in my Avid router. It struggles to keep up. The Makita's much better router. Um, but anyway, we made it through all five videos, and I couldn't be more happy with the success that I've had with all five of these videos. I'm going to get out of the way so I can zoom in on the last one. And, I mean, I had some issues with this. But uh, you can see spots where I had to fill it in, like right here. This whole area right here was a big gap. There was spots down here that I lost, like right here. I lost that whole piece. And I think it, you know, filled in pretty easily with the glue and the, the dust the cherry dust. I'm, I'm totally amazed at how good that came out. It's not a perfect board in any way. You know, the grains in it aren't perfect. I, I've always said this. The, <laughs> the end grain cutting board isn't a thing of beauty. It's a, it's a thing of toughness. They're better on your knives than, a, than an edge grain board, but I'm telling you right now, these things will last a lifetime. I just enjoy making them. There's a lot of work in them, a lot of sanding. But anyway, thank you so much, everyone, for watching this series and for all the comments and everything. I really appreciate it. You know, we'll be back out there again with some other videos this summer and spring. I can't wait to do all that. So if you haven't already, please subscribe to this channel. It really, really helps us a lot. And if you like this video, give it a like. I really appreciate that. It does help us. And uh, every little bit counts. And I re really appreciate everyone who's supported this channel. So until the next video, be safe out there.